Now, I actually never read Holy Terror. Uh, by that time, Frank Miller had already tore his draws with me <laughs> uh, when he put out The Dark Knight Strikes Again, or DK2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I fucking hated that ridiculous comic. I hated it. I hated the art. I hated all the stupid situations and scenarios. You know, Superman getting Wonder Woman pregnant within a second. Um, Batman allowing Lex Luthor um, to beat the holy hell out of him while Lex Luthor's standing there in boxer shorts, Chuck Taylor's and these disc gloves and he's just wailing on Batman <laughs> it was almost a sexual beating he was just sweating and shitting all over the place and Batman is just allowing himself to get beat I fucking hated that so I almost tore the comic up uh, I think it was the third one <laughs> by the time Batman was sitting there with a copy of the script in his hand and Flash had some like tea or something I was like I'm telling you shit this is fucking bullshit this is the disgrace to the original Dark Knight uh, returns. This is disgrace to the original Dark Knight Returns. So I was like, fuck this book. But then I was like, it's entertaining though. It's actually entertaining. Um, I like the colors, even though it's ridiculous, whatever. So I was like, I'll keep it. I'll make fun of it, but I'll just keep it. I won't throw it away. And then I guess not long after that, I don't know how many years after that, the spirit came out. And I again, fucking Chuck Taylors. So this weird obsession with putting people in these Chuck Taylors. Now I actually really love Chuck Taylors. I think they're cool myself. I'm actually even owned a pink pair for a while. But the spirit shouldn't be running around with Chuck Taylors. It just doesn't fit him at all. I just hated that. But, um... So, yeah, by that time... So, when I heard about Holy Terror when it was coming out, I don't think I was really reading comic books at that time, no. I always would go in and go out based on whether I moved to a new place and I didn't find a good comic book store or whatever. Or just whatever was going on wasn't interesting. So, but anyway, by the time I heard people talk about our preview, Holy Terror, I was like, I could believe it's going to be shit. Not just the quality, but the sentiment. I could believe Frank Miller being this old, angry guy from, <clears throat> excuse me, from New York or having lived in New York during 9-11 and being upset and just lashing out, you know, and um, so I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to read that. It's going to be shit. But it's one of those things where... Um, it's like, he's done a lot of great work. And just because he's working through some demons and issues on this one situation, it's not the end of the world. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to hold him to just this one dumb comic. And I actually just kind of forgot all about it. Um, <clears throat> so to hear this, uh, or see this now with this short box lady, um, makes this stink. And it's very, like, cynical and calculating how she does it. Because I've never heard of this uh, woman before. Except, maybe a few months ago. I don't remember when I saw just some guy's video on how she um, made a stink about something called the Lakes Comics Art Festival. And the thing is, I've only just started um, listening to the right wing. I don't know if... Um, just some guy considers himself the right wing, but he's always talking about the far left. But all the bad people that, you know, you hear about on uh, YouTube, I wasn't listening to a lot of these people until recently. Or maybe actually about, about just about, yeah, about a year now, ever since The Last of Us Part Two. You know, the, all the so-called SJWs and the progressive people all praised that game, despite all the shit. And I it opened my eyes to just how full of shit um, these people are and how as soon as you made a complaint about The Last of Us 2 no matter how like valid and on point it was you would have people who didn't give a shit about the game just pop up and defend it and that really opened my eyes <laughs> I, I said red pill but I don't know if it's black pill or red pill anymore I really don't know what the term is and I guess it's just as well because I don't give a shit it's just it opened my eyes so I'm this left wing guy this super left wing guy who despises SJWs because you know being SJW has nothing to do about uh, being good a good person or really protecting people they do this thing where they just want to control the conversation and they want to push people out as soon as they disagree with something you know and it's expedient for them to just pretend that they're afraid or that they're harmed they'll do it um, that piece of shit uh, David Jaffe I just, the last, I just watched the last video I'm ever going to watch of him or the last time I'm ever going to think of him. Um, he was 
doing a video about Blizzard Activision and the bullshit that they've been doing, the way they treat their female staff, apparently, the poor woman who committed suicide. I don't exactly know why. Were they showing pictures of her naked coochie to, to, to each other and laughing about it? Or was it the guy she went on a trip with who had butt plugs? Like, Did he show her butt plugs? She was like, no, I can't do this. So we don't know that situation exactly. But I do believe that there is bullshit going on at that company and that there are people abusing their position and abusing these women. Um, there's probably different degrees and whatever, but I'm not going to get into it because it's not that, you know, it's not worth trying to figure out who's really making a big stink about it and who's not. Because the uh, thing about it is, uh, SJWs always hurt their cause by... So, okay, with uh, David Jaffe's piece of shit ass. I'm watching the video because I want to hear him talk about it. He's been a member of the industry for years. I want to hear him talk about it and see what his experiences were about it and how he thinks it should be addressed, whatever. But no, what this fucking piece of shit does is he conflates actual abuse and this large company exploiting these women and their workers with guys complaining about fat Aloy. So he's conflating the two and he's making it about you got all these guys who don't have their masturbation fantasies. And I'm like, what does this have to do with... I thought you were talking about the abuse, the real-life abuse of real-life women <laughs> in this large company. But no, you're using this to say you just want to masturbate to your, your fake video game girls. Like they're, part, like, they're the reason why these women are getting abused in Activision and Blizzard. And they always do that, so... You hurt your entire cause. He had made one or two great points and he showed a really great clip about how people sort of basically deny that there's a problem. But when confronted with being put in the same situation, it's like, so I think the, the clip was basically this woman said, anyone here in this audience who wants to be treated like black people are treated in this country, raise your hand. Nobody did. She said, that's because you all know that black people aren't treated the same. And you don't want that for yourselves. That was a great point. But he's talking about how people who go, I don't like Fat Aloy. Why are they making these women less sexy now? I like to, you know, this is a visual medium. I like an attractive character. It'd be fun to, I'm not going to sit here and play 40 hours of looking at this fat character. It's annoying. And it's only because, like, if you just brought this character and you're playing the game, you're not thinking about it. When you realize that they're doing this simply because they don't want you to say it. They're only doing it out of spite. There's no reason to do it. They're just making the characters ugly because they don't want you to see an attractive character. And the fact that this fat, stupid little piece of shit like David Jaffe, he go fuck himself, would sit there and go, Oh, you know, I'm complaining about very attractive women. And you think... It's like, it's, you're, you're not helping anybody's cause. You would rather... Sit there and waste your time trying to junk dunk on people who just said, I don't like Fatty Lloyd. <laughs> You'd rather sit there and, and perform and act a fool about that than address a serious problem. You'd rather conflate the two. So with this uh, short bus situation, the same woman who apparently complained four years ago about this Lakes Comic Art Festival where... She's in this small town in fucking England talking about how there wasn't enough brown people and people were looking at her strange. She's running around here in her hijab and everything. And she can't understand why people are looking at her like, oh, like, you've been taking it back. Like, oh, I didn't expect to see this person here. You know, it's a bunch of white people in this little town. And there should be more people than the convention. And then at first the convention, this original uh, place, this festival, whatever, basically said, no, look, we tried to talk to her, but she's holding a, a grudge. And, you know, how, you know, we, we can't work with her because she's causing problems. She's not being reasonable because she just wants to control the situation. You know, it's like they, they always do this. It's like I said about how. All right. So let's before I get to that. So that was the first time I saw um, uh, just some guy do a good video on it. And it was like, OK, this was a few months ago. And I forgot all about this woman after that, though. He did a video. It made sense. Then I forgot about it. Because it's like, don't apologize to these, these people. Don't let these people um, 
take something simple and make it into something hateful and horrible for no fucking reason. Don't let them get away with that shit. You know, fuck that. But, um, so yeah, so he said all of that, like, fuck that. Don't let these people uh, bullshit you. And then I just forgot about it. I thought, okay, good video, whatever. Forgot all about it. Then she pops up again, of course, this week, whining about the fact that at this convention, it was in England, England it was called Thought Bubble. Everybody knows this now. Everybody knows this story. So I really didn't have to recap it. So this uh, short bus lady who complained, I guess, four years ago about not enough brown people at this comics convention or this little comics festival in this small little town in England where most of the people there are white. She's whining about it. <clears throat> that same person is now complaining about, I'm worried about my safety because Frank Miller wrote a terrible book about Islamophobia and I don't feel safe. I'm going to have to boycott. And it's like, okay, so this is a convention. COVID is supposedly over. People are actually going to conventions again. It really helps the comic industry to have these different people go out. <coughs> Frank Miller is a fucking legend. If um, Alan Moore is the Beatles of comics, Frank Miller is absolutely the Rolling Stones. You have this guy who's done so much great work. And to focus on one dumb comic that <laughs> not even his biggest and b baddest fans like. And to be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't feel safe to go to this convention with him there. It is not about feeling safe. They always do that. This is what I meant when I brought up Jaffe is I don't like this and it's not like I don't like this because I'm harmed it's just I don't like it I don't want him there I'm pissed that he wrote that book he shouldn't be here why should he be here and it's like he's heck like he's the reason why you fucking idiots will have more uh visitors to the convention you should be happy that more people come there you know and you know none of those fucking people who go there to chat with Frank Miller or get an autograph or whatever they're not going to go run over to the short bus booth and go, or table and go, Yeah, yeah, holy terror, you damn Muslims, get out of the country. They're not going to fucking do that. At what point has that ever happened? Since 2011, how many conventions has Frank Miller gone to? And how many anti-Muslim incidents have happened because of that? But they do that, like I said. If they don't like something, and they don't want you being a part of it at all, they'll just say, oh, it harms me. So when somebody says, I don't like fat Aloy, the response isn't, don't be a dick. <laughs> you know, uh, don't, be, don't be a dick. I'm not making a fuss about it. The response is, you're hurting society. You're harming women. There's 50% women who own PS5s, and they're not comfortable with an attractive woman. They're all fat and ugly, and they want to see a fat and ugly character. What the fuck are you talking about? When people complained about uh, Miranda's juicy ass being edited out of Mass Effect 2, Electric Boogaloo, people literally, with a straight face, these people are sociopathic, were saying, it's, they're cutting it because it's harmful to women. When a man sees that in a video game, it gives him the right, it makes him feel like he has the right to go out into the, out into the world and treat women like they're objects. What, what the fuck are you talking about? What does that even mean? So you're saying this guy goes, oh my God, look at Miranda Lawson's ass. That's a great shot. Then they go, uh, and they go outside and they look at a woman and they go, that is an object. I will treat her now as an object. Miranda Lawson has a great ass. You have a great ass too. <laughs> I'm not even talking about street harassment. You can't, like, I mean, all these things that happen to people in real life. So you can say a woman has been harassed, attacked, abused, and that's all bad. That's shit. But you can't blame some dude <laughs> singing a hot, juicy ass on a video game and say, that's causing it. That's the problem. This shit was going on before fucking video games. It was going on before everything. It's one of the oldest things going on in the world. <laughs> and it, again, because they don't want, they just don't want guys, straight guys, enjoying it. Now, uh, when people were complaining about the censorship 
and Miranda. At the same time, they were pointing out the hypocrisy of all the people who were defending it and attacking the straight male assholes who were mad about the butt shots being removed. All those people, when it was come to, when it came to Lady Dimitrescu or Dimitrescu, all those people was like, "Oh yeah, step on me, mommy milkers." Oh, it's great. For some reason, they decided to make her a lesbian icon, so it was fine for her to be sexual and and everybody to talk sexually about her and talk about her as an object. Because they all talk about her mommy milkers or, you know, sit on me with a big ass or step on me and all this stuff. But because straight guys, and straight guys like to be trust too, but for when straight guys go, stop censoring the game, there's not, <laughs> there's no reason to cut this out. It's this harmful to women. Women are being harmed. You can't have it. It's destructive to women. People literally constantly attack um, J. Scott Campbell. No matter what he says on Twitter, whatever he says, you're going to have two, three, four people call him a Disney porn uh, star, princess artist, and then just start, start trying to rag him. And then they'll get three or four likes or hearts or whatever. Uh, Frank Miller, on his Twitter, he did a picture of Ronan and he said, stop Agent Hate. And there was a few people in the comments with the replies going, what about Holy Terror? What about Holy Terror? So these people, they don't feel harmed at all. They just feel like, well, I'm just going to be, you know, a, a, a SJW, a social justice warrior, and I'm going to attack this old man for some book that nobody cares about. Like I said, not even his biz, biggest and best fans. I don't know if I said it in this version or not. I've been trying to record this a couple of times. Stupid dogs are yelling outside. But anyway, not even his biggest and best fans give a shit about Holy Terror. They don't praise it they don't say oh this is a great work this is commensurate with daredevil and the dark knight returns this i you know when i read holy terror i feel like a holy terror and i go out to, to, to do jihad against the islams I, what? I don't even i don't get it so you have this person and i just picture them going it has come to my attention that as frank miller has been invited to this convention that I wanted to go to. I can't now go to it in good faith because as a proud Muslim woman, I'm scared. <laughs> then you have all these, like, no-name dipshits who are all going, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Drake Miller is a horrible person and, and I, I, it's a shame that you can't go. It's like people will shoot themselves in the foot. To appease some clown nobody gives a shit about. And this isn't about, oh, protect the poor, marginalized people. She's a poor mother, so we got to do all this stuff for her. Why can't anybody be reasonable and say, look, calm the fuck down, okay? Trick Miller is an honored guest. He's a, a legend in the industry. We don't support what he did with uh, Holy Terror. But we have been doing this for years, and there's no anti-Muslim hatred going on at this convention. And we're going to make sure everybody's safe and protected. This is a safe environment. You know, stop whining about the fact that I don't like that he wrote this book. And then people are still, like, inviting him to things. Like, this one, and this is, it shows, it tells you a lot. There's this one clown, Sarah Horrocks. Thought bubble seeing what happened with Lakes and learning nothing. The move would have been to convince, pay, Miller to bow out of his own accord. Now they've turned that convention into a bigotry litmus test. During a pandemic, is Miller is Miller's pull that big still? Perch was saying, "Will Frank Miller be allowed to go to any convention again? Because if you do one thing that uh, people don't like, are you supposed to be hounded forever for it? Like Muslims are not being hounded because of, by holy terror. Like nobody chases after short uh, bus and saying Frank Miller did holy terror, and I agree with him." I hate, I hate you Muslims. I'm going to kill you. Like, what? I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I don't, like, what, where is the, the problem? The problem is, like I said, I was looking at Frank Miller's tweets and I was looking at all the people replying to him and they would always stick it in. What about Holy Terror? And it's like, the only people who are talking about Holy Terror are the people who are mad that he did it. <laughs> like, like, literally, the people who have a problem with it. Nobody on Frank Miller's side is going, yeah, Holy Terror was a great book. It taught me a lot. 
I, it, it learned me good on how Muslims really are. Nobody's saying that. What is the problem? At what point in all the times that Frank Miller has been out and about and going to different conventions and stuff, has anyone been harmed by that fucking book? You cannot like the book. But don't pretend that, oh, it makes, it, you're unsafe. You don't feel safe. You just don't want him there and you don't want him around you. You want to just act up. And I, my thing is, I, like somebody suggested, oh, why don't they have a panel? I, if I was Frank Miller, I was like, oh, fuck you and your stupid ass panel. The thing is, what's so funny about this, after this cow um, complained and you have these uh, dipshits, all these no, no nothings. Let me see the best person on this list of no nothings who was like, oh, I really feel bad. They don't think Frank Miller, a legend in the field. And one of the main reasons why we have jobs here because he made comics legitimate and gave it all this press because the guy is a fucking legend an amazing talent one of the greatest cartoonists in the history of the world he's probably top yeah he's probably top two or one for a lot of people as far as great cartoonists go and you have these stupid fucking people like this what's this guy's name um jeremy whitley isn't he the guy who did um unstoppable wasp i should check let me see before i talk too much shit Jeremy, he sounds like the guy who did Unstoppable Wasp. That stupid, treacly book. Let me see. Jeremy Whitley. Trash. Yeah, Unstoppable Wasp. You got this. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm not going to. I was about to talk talking shit. But I got to talk shit about his looks. But I'm, I'm you know, let, 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 me, let, let me let that go. I'll, I'm, I'm not going to be like that. But him. I can't believe this is still going on. At the last. American Library Association, they went out of their way to feature Frank Miller as a creator and to put him on panels meant to introduce librarians to graphic novels. This can't continue. Why not? He's like, that's only one book. Don't put Holy Terror on there. Like, why is it that every great thing he's done means nothing to, because of this one dumb thing that he did? That even he says, I'm not the person who would do that anymore. Guys on, well, a lot of people believe he was on drugs at the time and alcoholic. You see how bad his body he looks. He does look like he's 80-something when he's only like 64 or 5 or something like that. And people think he's probably going to drop soon. I kind of don't. I was thinking that for a while. I hope not, but, you know, it's his life. But I feel like he's tougher than he looks. <laughs> and I think he'll be around for a while. But still, it's it's a shame that... This is about comic books. This isn't about I I want a safe space for for me as a Muslim to sit in new so no one will look at Frank Miller and talk to him. Because she knows nobody's gonna attack her because Frank Miller's at this convention. Frank Miller's not gonna attack her. You know, so I I, I, I it's just a an upside down bullshit topsy turvy world. Where people take things like, I don't like this guy's book. It was insulting and insensitive. That's all you have to say. I mean, this isn't this whole bullshit about, oh, he's really going to destroy everybody because his anti-Muslim hate is going to cause a new holy war. Nobody thinks that. No, no, they don't think that. So why do we have these weak festival people why can't they just simply say look we understand your concern but we we've, we've been assured by frank miller that he's not going to attack short bus or any of her muslim friends and, uh, and other than that don't worry about it okay just shut the fuck up all right frank miller is going to draw a lot of people and he's a big draw <laughs> A lot of these people wouldn't even show up at this damn convention if it wasn't him because it's not going to be um, that well attended otherwise. And what's funny is after these assholes at Thought Bubble, you know, betrayed themselves and, you know, <laughs> apologized and kicked Frank Miller out. After they did all of that shit, this short box cow isn't going anyway. She just really wanted to cause trouble. She went to talk shit. She actually probably wasn't going to go in the first place. Probably didn't have the money or whatever. <laughs> and she decided she was going to use Frank Miller. Gets, make some hay off of Frank Miller in the meantime. And it's just so funny. You didn't do enough. And it was so funny. 
in the Thought Bubble um, tweet about how they, you know, Frank Miller's not attending and how they feel sorry because they wanted to make a safe place for everybody to go to. You know, you're, they um, only allowed people <laughs> that they know to reply. And all the people that know them <laughs> who replied all still gave them shit. <laughs> they apologized. They told the guy, you know, Frank Miller, he can't go. And yet all the fucking people who uh, replied to that tweet where they announced it still fucking attacked these assholes. So it's, like, it's not worth apologizing to them. It's not worth... Like they always say, bend the knee. I don't like that. I mean, that phrase is annoying to me because I don't watch Game of Thrones and I don't want to just take everybody's fucking stupid phrases. But these people, um, you know, prostrated themselves for these stupid-ass SJWs. And these SJWs, they never care. They never say, oh, good, thanks. And they never go, you know, we you know, we don't want to take this too far. We won't make too big of a deal of this, you know. <laughs> all they had to say, all those people had to could could have said the people who supposedly supported her when she first said it they should said just go to the convention frank miller's an old man he's not going to do anything and we'll protect you if he tries to attack so don't worry about it they didn't say that they just attacked thought bubble after thought bubble apologized what's the point of apologizing what's the point of trying to make things right if it's never right if you can't make it right like the thing is all thought bubble did was invite one of the greatest cartoonists ever to their convention. And they didn't care about Holy Terror because nobody cares about Holy Terror. They really could have said, nobody thinks about fucking Holy Terror. It's a terrible book. <laughs> we don't give a shit. You know, he's done, like, they literally could have done a, a, a tweet where they had a picture of all his great works and then next to it, Holy Terror. Why do you think we invited him to our convention? Because of fucking Holy Terror? Or because of Dark Knight Returns? Because of Sim City? Because of Daredevil? Because of Ronin? Because of uh, Martha Washington? Why the fuck do you think? <laughs> Hardboiled? What, what do you think we... You know, uh, Big Boy Rusted the Robot? Who gives a shit about fucking Holy Terror? That's literally like... That's the equivalent of if, if Frank Miller was pissed. And some woman accidentally knocked him he was drunk and some woman elbowed him and he yelled you fucking bitch at her <laughs> holy terror is the equivalent of him yelling you fucking bitch at somebody and then no one ever gets over it or forgets it and they act like that that's his defining moment and that's the defines everything of how his career and how his uh, should be so yeah i probably went on longer than i wanted to on this but um yeah I think it sucks I'm, I'm concerned that old Frank Miller isn't going to be allowed to go to any convention going forward because um, as soon as somebody tries to announce it the same people will go this is harmful because they didn't they'd never let anything go they don't forgive and it's not like oh they're just such powerful judges for humanity it's like these they're pieces of shit they don't care about anything else they don't have anything else they don't have any power so all they want to do is hold on to the things that they can have a grudge about like the lady who's doing the lake arts festival when that one when she complained about that the woman who was doing tweets about basically brushing it off and saying fuck her she kept saying the woman has a grudge she's unreasonable we tried to work it out with her but she doesn't want to work it out she's already made her She's making her demands. Are you supposed to just follow her demands? And it's ironic. Just think about Islamophobia. Well, they're afraid of this Muslim. They're afraid of this Muslim. She has no power whatsoever. She's not going to do anything to anybody. But they've given her the power of social media pressure. Which everybody should just ignore because it's not important. But yeah, I was thinking. I was wanting to make a joke. But, you know, in this day and age with COVID and everything, who knows? But it's like somebody should just make Frank Miller, give him his own con, make a big Frank Miller con and let a bunch of people go see him, you know, give him a good. I hate to say it like that, though, <laughs> I'm like, he, he's, he's still got some years left. <laughs> but I do think, you know, that they probably somebody should probably organize the convention for him and um, give him a good. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry. Take care, everyone. <laughs>